You saw actions, not words, from the Pelicans in their win over the Milwaukee Bucks. I'll tell you how Zion delivered down the stretch and how great adjustments by Willie Green scored the Pelicans a signature win. It's the Friday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all day after the Pelicans beat the Milwaukee Bucks 107-100, getting not just a clutch victory, which has been rare for the Pelicans this season, but also a win over a very good team. And you saw them put actions out there on the court, take their words from the loss against the Oklahoma City Thunder, make adjustments, make changes, put those into actions. And look, it delivered a significant victory for New Orleans here on their road to the playoffs. This is a tough stretch of schedule and they just picked up a win that we weren't really expecting them to get. So we're going to break down Zion's excellent play, leading the team to the victory offensively and defensively too. I want to look at the tremendous team defense, particularly in the first half of this game. And then a nice balance between Jonas Valanciunas and Larry Nance Jr. and what head coach Willie Green was doing. So we're going to cover it all in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans, which is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And of course, Make Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, breaking down everything you want to know about the team, the number one Pelicans podcast. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost 10,000 of y'all on YouTube. And if you listen Monday through Friday and you are an every day, and I saw a bunch of you at the game, let me know in the comments down below. So let's start with Zion Williamson because he was truly phenomenal in this game. 28 points on 15 shot attempts, getting to the line, 16 free throw attempts, five rebounds, including a big one late in the fourth quarter over Giannis. He out-rebounded Giannis for a massive defensive board that more or less sealed the game for New Orleans. He did this with just three turnovers, but it was really him. So look, We'll talk a little bit more about his defense in a minute here. He was good all game and had it going and was just being aggressive and attacking. But I want to look at the fourth quarter, right? We talked about this at length the past two episodes if you're in every day. You know, he had said after the loss to the Oklahoma City Thunder where he didn't take enough shot attempts in anybody's opinion, right? And said, I got to demand the ball. I've got to go out and I've got to do this, you know, and be the one that... that takes care of everything. You know, we talked a lot about accountability. There's one thing to just say like, oh, I've got to be better about this. But if you don't put actions behind it, what sort of accountability is it truly, right? And I said, there were going to be other close games and the Pelicans needed to learn their lessons from this loss to OKC. I wasn't quite expecting it to be the literal next game, but they did it. And the main reason why was Zion Williamson in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, Zion scored 11 points, 11 of the Pelicans, 22, to keep this just enough for New Orleans. He took, the the numbers are are interesting to look at here, 11 points, and he did it basically at the free throw line. He was aggressive. He was getting downhill, finding seams. The Pelicans were also running a couple of very good plays for him too, where he would get the ball and then just attack the defense. You saw him go right at Giannis, right at Brook Lopez, some really excellent defenders with length that kind of tower over Zion, right? And he was fearless in this. And he went right at them, forcing fouls on them, getting to the line. You know, at one point, Giannis was in danger of fouling out. Same for Brook Lopez. That puts so much pressure on that defense, but it also allows other guys to get to the line. Trey Murphy going to the line to shoot free throws. Herb Jones going to the line to shoot free throws, right? Because that team could get into the bonus because of the work that Zion Williamson was doing. Watching them throw a Giannis and Brook Lopez double team at him and then him splitting that and still scoring at the rim is incredibly impressive. This was a player who knew he needed to do better, right? We all know this. And then he went out and he did it. 
That's like exactly, it's exactly what you want. We're laughing about it because it's so simple, right? But that's exactly what you want. That is the accountability. This is him rising to the occasion in a way we have not exactly seen him do before. He, he, he delivered the win for New Orleans, right? You want a game, you want a game. There were only two games in the NBA on Thursday night. The Pelicans beating Milwaukee and then Boston losing in overtime to Atlanta with a, a crazy, you know, Jontae Murray game. But there were two games. There were a lot of eyes, a lot of eyes on New Orleans in this one. You want a statement win? You want a statement moment for Zion Williamson? We talked about him making third team all NBA potentially. There were eyes on here and he delivered in one of the bigger stages in one of the bigger moments in his arguably biggest best season so far. He's been playing absolutely fantastic basketball recently and it's great to see him not just play good basketball right but deliver a very dominant win the past three games according to stat muse 31 points per game six rebounds six assists on 70 percent shooting heck yeah no one wants to play this right if the bucks and their length which normally give zion williamson some trouble if they can't slow him down Right In a game where New Orleans didn't shoot the three ball well, they made just 8 of 32, so the spacing wasn't exactly there. This was just, and this is going to be a theme in the next segment too, this was just Zion imposing his will on a really good Bucks team. And they didn't have an answer, right? Not only that, you know, we're, we're talking about the offense here. One of the things that I think was one of the more I- impressive things, right, down the stretch, you saw him take a charge, from Giannis that put the fifth foul on Giannis. Now they reviewed it, they overturned it. But there was Zion literally putting his body on the line. Star players don't want to take charges. No one wants. I'm a big fan of banning the charge, frankly. I don't like the contact that players can get injured. And Zion just threw his body in the way. Again, it got overturned, but it's not about the end result. It's what he did, right? Sacrificing for the team. And Zion did that. This was incredibly impressive performance from him. This is the type of thing that makes you feel good about what the Pelicans could do in the playoffs behind him. Just delivered, y'all. Like that's that's what I have to say here. He delivered in just very incredible fashion on both ends of the court in a game where they needed him to do that. That is called accountability, putting actions behind your words. It's exactly what you want to see. It's a ton of growth. Just all things awesome, basically. What was the most impressive thing Zion did in the game? Let me know in the comments down below on YouTube. Coming up, one of the things, particularly in the first half, it, y'all, this Pelicans defense was incredible. They did a number of different things that you might not even have realized. I'm going to tell you just how impressive they were with the different things they did. This was really good coaching adjustments. I want you to know about this. I think this is really important. and I think it's really going to matter in the playoffs. And I'll explain why coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about eBay Motors because, honestly, it's probably one of my favorite sponsors that we have here. I'm going to be driving my old, almost 50-year-old Corvette tomorrow because of eBay Motors. It's running. It's on the road. I enjoy driving it because of eBay Motors here because that's where I get all of my parts. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is what keeps your vehicle alive. And eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle or level it up. Whether you want speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And I go there because they have over 122 million parts for your vehicle. Old, newer car, whatever it is, they have it. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. And with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. So with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your vehicle on the road just like my Corvette over at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only, available to U.S. customers. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Whether you're a new listener, a longtime listener, a brand new Pelicans fan that's just getting excited for the playoffs, welcome. We cover the team Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We are on YouTube as well, where there are almost 10,000 Pelicans fans wanting to hang out with you. So join them, comment down below. And if you're an everydayer, meaning you listen Monday through Friday, let me know and tell a friend about the show, right? This Pelicans team is fun. We're about to really give you some insight into the defense and things that they were doing that I thought was 
impressive because the Pelicans came into this game with a very big game plan. Oh, by the way, are you watching? Here's here's why you need to tell a friend. Are you watching Fox Sports ESPN all day on your TV? Do you have to turn down the volume with all of that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm sure they're going to put Locked On Pelicans on the Locked On 24-7 stream because this was such a big win. It's going to be eyes on the team. Tell a friend about the show because everyone is going to be talking about him after this victory and how good Zion was delivering in the clutch. But what got them a lead over the Milwaukee Bucks, what was arguably the most impressive part, right? Milwaukee really struggled in that first half of the game. They scored just 45 points. Milwaukee is a good team. They have some very talented players. Keeping them to 100 is an impressive thing here. Holding them to 45 Having at one point an 18 point lead against them is not an easy thing to do when Giannis is maybe quietly getting into the MVP conversation. He's going to be first team all NBA for sure. And they just like they looked terrible in the first half, to be perfectly honest. And it wasn't just a them thing. They were missing some free throws and stuff like that, certainly, and just looked out of sorts. But they looked out of sorts because of the Pelicans defense, like had that team flummoxed, bamboozled. We could use all the big words here. They had no idea what New Orleans was going to throw at them in this one and looked entirely unprepared. And New Orleans looked as good as I've ever seen them defensively because of some adjustments they made. We know what the Pelicans do defensively mainly. They like to switch, right? A big man, ball handler has the ball. Big man comes and sets the screen. Your guard switches onto the big. The big switches onto the guard. And you kind of just deal with it. You don't fight through screens. You don't go around screens. Anything like that. New Orleans, though, in this one came out and they weren't switching immediately, a little bit here and there. But in general, they were fighting through screens and trying to be much more physical with the Milwaukee Bucks than you're accustomed to seeing just the Pelicans play. And I love this. They know the Milwaukee Bucks take a lot of threes. They take the six most in terms of three-point attempts per game. They know Milwaukee's a good three-point shooting team, eighth best when it comes to three-point percentage. And rather than just saying, all right, we're going to do these things, they went and played physical against them. They were fighting, going over screen. So when there's a screen set, if you're going to fight through it, you go above the screen or or below the screen, right? If you go below the screen, the, uh, the screen gets set and you kind of go underneath that guy and you give room to the ball handler. It means they have room to shoot threes. If you go above the screen, you're going to try and stick closer to them, give them less room to shoot. But if that screen works, they kind of get sprung to then drive and attack downhill. But New Orleans was navigating these screens really well. They weren't switching like they normally do. And Milwaukee wasn't able to generate some of these mismatches like they were maybe thinking they were going to get. You did not see Giannis then getting switched onto a guy like CJ McCollum in this one, right? Or Jordan Hawkins when he was out there. They really stuck to their guys and were then kind of playing physical on them, being aggressive with them. It set the tone for this game, and they're usually not that physical of a team. And the Bucs didn't look prepared for this at all, right? This was, when you were watching it, the best way to describe it was like they took it to the Bucs. They took it to the Bucs rather than being reactive to what the Bucs were doing. It's basically what like imposing your will on the other team looks like. I just mentioned that with Zion Williamson. The Pelicans defense really did that by being very, very physical with this Milwaukee Bucks team who just wasn't prepared for it and didn't seem comfortable with that whatsoever. And in the first half, they were all out of sorts with that, right? They had nine turnovers in the first half alone. So it was great to see New Orleans play a different style of defense than we're usually seeing. But then they did switch, right? So they kept Milwaukee off balance when Milwaukee tried to adjust. They kind of then actually like forced another adjustment. We're like, all right, you adjust that. We're going to make a counter move to your counter move, right? That's where the chess match comes into play with things like that. And with guys like Zion being a very good defender individually, right? Trey Murphy going out there and rebounding, the uh, getting these defensive boards. And then Herb Jones being straight up, y'all, incredible. He had three steals and three blocks in the first half. Stocks, stocks and um, stocks, stocks and stocks, stocks, steals and blocks combined. He had six. That's nuts. That's an incredible performance from him on just two fouls. He was fantastic 
in this game. And the rest of the team really rose to the occasion because of it. So now all of a sudden they're not switching. And Milwaukee is trying to force the, sorry, they're not fighting over screens and Milwaukee's trying to kind of generate some space. And now they can't get that space because New Orleans starts switching. So those screens aren't really doing anything all of a sudden here. And they were just like, they wilted from the moment is the best way to put it. You could see how frustrated Giannis was that even when he was going to the free throw line, like he was taking almost the entirety of the 10 seconds and just missing shots. Like he was in his head, the entire Bucks team was in their own heads about all of this. This was truly an impressive thing. And when you see them play defense like this, and there's more to come about the defense in a second here, you know, having these sort of counters and coming up with a really strong game plan for the Milwaukee Bucks, knowing you needed to come out and kind of wash the taste of that bad loss to OKC away from everything, that makes you feel really good about coming up with a tailored game plan to your opponent in the postseason and really giving them a hard time. And when everyone is playing defense like this and everyone was good in this one, that's going to give you a lot of hope for New Orleans being able to just wreck some stuff for the opponent in the postseason. So... They didn't switch, then they switched, but they also threw, and they've been doing more and more of this, a lot of zone defense in there. And zone defense does a really good job of not letting opponents get into the paint. So Giannis, who, you know, basically every year, it's does Giannis score more in the paint or does Zion? They are the number one and two guys usually, right? Giannis is leading that this year. Well, he couldn't get into the paint. He looked terrible in the first half of this game, right? Giannis had 12 points on 12 shot attempts, didn't get to the line once. He just really struggled, right? Damian Lillard was very much limited with the defense they were playing on him, not letting him get three-point shots off, trying to funnel him into mid-rangers where you're going to live with those shots being taken because it's not three-pointers and not shots at the rip. And New Orleans had a significant advantage of points in the paint in the first half in this one. They just took the Bucs completely out of their rhythm with the defense, and there was nothing going there. In the second half, in the second half, Milwaukee kind of found their way a little bit more, right? They started getting to the line more. Giannis went 11 times, but he just seemed so rattled. He missed so many free throws in this game. They just had no answer to what New Orleans was doing. They shot under 54, under 55%, let's call it, from the free throw line in this game. It is rare that New Orleans has a better free throw percentage than their opponent. And I loved it, right? Like, you just really took it to that Milwaukee Bucks team, and that bodes well for the postseason. You go up against the Clippers, another team, you're going to come up with the right game plan for them because you have very good individual defenders. And as a team, they were working great. Milwaukee was searching for shots. They were passing the ball around a lot and weren't getting good looks because New Orleans was talking to one another. They were rotating well. The point of attack defense was good, which didn't put them in bad rotation situations. This was a well thought out game plan by head coach Willie Green and the rest of the coaching staff. Jaron Collins, their defensive coordinator. There's a reason he interviewed for a head coaching job this past offseason with the Detroit Pistons. This was great. You, you just really shut down and limited a very good Milwaukee team, and it was truly impressive to watch. It felt like New Orleans coming out and kind of having like a playoff-esque mindset in this, and I absolutely love that, right? They have the fifth best offense in the league. Milwaukee has the fifth best offense in the league. They normally average 120 points per game. They, they scored 100 in this one. Their offensive rating is... in this game, New Orleans held them to 103.1, right? About 20 to 15 point difference, depending on how you're looking at, you know, things like that. That's significant. That's an impressive, impressive defensive game. And with this Pelicans defense getting better and better and better, they've been third best, by the way, since the All-Star break. It's going to go up after this probably by a good bit. I just loved it. Yeah, this game was fun. Winning games and beating good teams like that is a fun thing to do. And it was really impressive to see. And I'm very pleased with just everything. Just what a way to respond after what was a rough game uh, a couple nights ago. And so to do that right now with what they've done is just truly an impressive thing. New Orleans moved to fifth best defense on the season on the season with this. Let me see if I can find post all-star and see what that number is. Are they, are they at the top? They're number two. Now they were number three. They're number two. Now post all-star break or only Orlando is better. Um, which tells you how well they're playing on defense. And so to just 
I don't know, like dismantle the Bucks like that. Awesome performance, everyone included in this one. And then Herb Jones is just a freaking monster. This is the type of game that might get him into the running for defensive player of the year, at least get him more votes. He'll make he'll make an all-defensive team. He's going to make first team all-defense. Like, it almost seems certain now with the way everyone's kind of talking about him and looking at him. But again, there were going to be a lot of eyes on the team in this one. Truly, truly, like an elite, one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen from this team, especially when you factor in the quality of opponent. Another area that I thought was really good, finding the right balance between using Jonas Valanciunas and Larry Nance Jr. And not just sitting one for the entirety of the half, even if I don't think it was as big of a deal as some people do. The balance needed to be better. It was. This at least makes you think this can work for the remainder of the season. I'll explain why that's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. There's the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. So gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue Rogue is the perfect mid-sized crossover for your next adventure. There's also the 2024 Nissan Armada. It's going to change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. So tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Nissan Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Armada, or the Nissan Pathfinder and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is also brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created... Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date in the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a whole lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Amazon uh, Fire TV channels on the Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should Trust me on this. You can learn more over at amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know, whether it's game breakdowns, right? Whether it's looking towards the playoffs, and we're going to have some great crossovers when it comes to that. We do the live shows as well, so I get to interact with y'all. We get to celebrate these big wins together. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast and join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well and become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday tell a friend about the show the Pelicans are going to be fun you want your buddies everybody you know clued into them so tell them to listen to Locked On Pelicans part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day all right let's start to start to put a bow on there's more I want to talk about with this win over the Milwaukee Bucks 107 100 Zion leading the way Zion's going to be in the running for an all-NBA team. The defense being elite, remaining elite, and maybe seeing one of the best defensive performances we've ever seen from this team. It was truly something here. And then the one area that, you know, has hurt New Orleans all season long in terms of like players and position has been the center spot, right? Trying to find the right balance of Jonas Valanciunas and Larry Nance Jr., two centers with very different styles, When do you use one? When do you use the other? They both have some positives. They both have some significant weaknesses too. And New Orleans found the right balance from them. Head coach Willie Green found the right balance of them in this game. After only playing 10 minutes against the Oklahoma City Thunder, Jonas Valanciunas played 23 minutes, 15 seconds in this one. He had 17 points and 10 rebounds. When in the beginning of the game, the Milwaukee Bucks, and length is something that bothers Zion and in general bothers New Orleans, bothers everybody in the NBA. 
couldn't quite get some things going. They were a little bit out of sorts, kind of trying to find their way into the game. This team just relied on Jonas Valanciunas, his height, and kind of played through him. You were going to need kind of a balanced scoring effort to establish a lot of these guys as threats and then make the Milwaukee Bucks respect that and then eventually open things up for Zion, particularly when you're going 8 of 32 from 3 and the spacing isn't quite there. But if Jonas is scoring, if CJ McCollum is scoring, he had 25 points in this game, right? Herb Jones with 11 points. Trey Murphy with 15. Larry off the bench, we'll get into him in a second with nine. You had minutes from guys that you trust and they were delivering and it opened things up. So playing through Jonas a little bit, right? Knowing that he has good size and good strength and can kind of go body for body, physicality for physicality with some of the guys on the Milwaukee Bucks, like Bobby Portis, who plays a very physical game. And those two had to be separated at one point, right? Brooke Lopez wants to be physical too. So does Middleton. So does uh, Giannis. You have a guy there that can kind of hang with that and bring it to your opponent. And they played through Jonas Valanciunas, and I'm glad to see that they didn't just try and play small and only go with Larry Nance Jr. But Larry also played. He played 24 minutes, 45 seconds, nine points, seven rebounds in this, along with three assists and three steals. You need him defensively too, where Jonas at times can be a liability, but he was really good defensively in this game. I thought he was up for the challenge on everything here. But Larry gives you a different look. And so when Giannis would sub out, they would put in Larry Nance Jr. knowing you didn't need as much height and you can go a little bit smaller and try and outrun Brooke Lopez and put him in negative situations. And so one of the things you saw head coach Willie Green do, and I'm going to be curious to look at this more going forward is, Okay, when they kind of paired Larry's minutes with Zion's minutes for the most part, and then paired CJ with Jonas, so that if Zion comes out, you had CJ and Valanciunas out there, and that allowed them to have two really credible offensive threats that can kind of be the focal points that you can play through. And then when Valanciunas would come out, you put Larry in, but let's put Zion out there too. Larry taking a three, making a three in this, same as Valanciunas, right? Being a guy to kind of keep the offense facilitated facilitating and moving and at times being a, not quite a point guard, but a nice connective piece was a really smart thing by head coach Willie Green. They still closed with Larry, but Larry, you saw trying to be more active on the board. He had seven rebounds in this game, three offensive, four defensive after a game against OKC where he did struggle with the rebounding. You also got very good contributions from Trey Murphy there that allowed you to play this, right? This was Willie Green kind of seeing the moment, seeing what his team was doing and finding the right balance between the center position, which is potentially going to hurt New Orleans. But they didn't let him hurt them in this game. That's why when we look at the favorable matchups for New Orleans in the postseason, the Clippers, I think, being one of them enough, right? It's because Zubac isn't good and isn't good in going into this. So the center position isn't actually a problem for New Orleans, but it is a problem. And it's the right team. But if you can find the right balance, the right lineups to minimize that, that's not as much of a weakness anymore. And the Pelicans need to try and figure that out. So there's a little bit more balance there than they did it well in this game. I'm going to be curious to see if this is kind of what they do, the move going forward. But there were times when you needed Jonas Valanciunas and he delivered the physicality he brought, the toughness he brought, wasn't scared of anybody, right? That was great. Larry being up for this one, getting a technical, I kind of liked Right, Him grabbing some very key boards, making some key passes down low when they realized the length of the Bucks was going to bother this team and kept the offense moving. So just a great performance all around. Some really great adjustments by head coach Willie Green on what they were doing defensively and then finding the right balance between Jonas Valanciunas and Larry Nance Jr. If you get Zion, who's going to take over a game like this, really good defense and the center position isn't a problem. Good luck, the rest of the NBA. That's not a Pelicans team that anyone wants to play right now. If Zion can go and score 28 against this Bucks team with the length that they have that has traditionally bothered him, he can do it against anybody. And then they're going to get Brandon Ingram back eventually, and that's going to make this team even better. I'm looking forward to the next couple Pelicans games. Big one coming up on Saturday against the Boston Celtics. We will have a bonus show for you tomorrow on Saturday with, well, it'll be like late Friday night. Uh, with Locked On Celtics host John Krause, friend of mine, he's here in New Orleans for the game. He co-hosts Locked On NBA with me. Make that your second listen today. We'll have a bonus show kind of looking at that matchup, talking about just the teams in general. It should be a lot of fun. It'll be on both of our YouTube pages as well. 
And then he'll be at the game with me. By the way, if you see me at the game on Saturday, I should have some Locked On Pelican stickers coming in, hopefully on Friday. So I'm looking forward to that. Come over, say hi. I'll give you a sticker or two. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a fun stretch run of the season. So make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, wherever you get your podcasts, and join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. Tell a friend about the show, become an everydayer. Say hi to me when you see me at the arena. It's going to be a fun end of the season. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And we'll be back with y'all on Monday to talk about the Celtics game and what the Pelicans need to do to keep momentum going into the playoffs going forward. So I'll see y'all then.